Hi everyone. Welcome to uh, Furniture, Fixtures and Fitness, a panel on designing spaces specifically to support the pursuit of health. I'm Sandra, I'm the editor at Denfair. Uh, now my guests here today have a wealth of knowledge on this topic and we will start picking their brains shortly. But I want to ask by asking, I want to start by asking you guys a question. So how many of us here have a membership to a gym or a wellness center? Okay, so there's a few of us, good, I do, I do. I won't ask you how often you use it, so don't worry. <laughs> um, now, we're a design savvy group here. So I'd like to ask, what are the key things you're looking for in that space? Natural light? You got natural light, a bit of a sense of space, a sense of generosity. Um, maybe a balance between areas where you might work out on your own versus, you know, group activities. Um, now, we're here today because we've seen a real shift in the design of these spaces. So, up to perhaps a decade ago, most gyms were sweaty, um, <laughs> uninviting places. I think that we'd agree that they're largely overlooked by design. Um, and many yoga studios and, and wellness centers too used to have a kind of undesigned feeling about them. Um, more kind of a lo-fi uh, bohemian sort of experience rather than a curated uh, style. Um, but these days, in a society that never switches off, there's a renewed focus on self-care and the fitness and wellness industry is booming. Um, so remember when gym clothes were just your old baggy tees and trackies. And now it's all sort of perfectly coordinated active wear and engineered fabrics. I think the same thing is happening with the design of fitness and wellness centers. It's becoming smarter and more tailored towards the experience. Um, our panelists today each bring a really unique perspective to this conversation. So today we have Alicia McKim at the end, designer and director at Golden Studio, Cyan Pascale, founder of The Light Collective, and all the way from Italy, Christian Brugnoli, architect with Techno Gym. Um, so maybe we can start by, uh, if you guys could tell me a little bit about yourselves and how you approach this topic through your work. Ladies first. Ladies first. <laughs> um, so I'm Alicia, I'm the co-director of Golden. Um, the business is a multidisciplinary business, so we, do it, we focus on all things, not just wellness centres. The name Golden represents a feeling and that's something that we are really strong with through our work. So it's that warm, harmonious, um, that perfect moment, the golden light. And it's really um, important that we, or this idea that we provoke a feeling um, in a space and we'll strive for that in each project. So I guess alongside that, we're equally pragmatic um, and incredibly detailed. And we, I guess it's the balance of all of those things that do lend us to um, design wellness spaces because I think the clients are already really connected with the idea of creating a feeling within the space. Um, we've designed a number of wellness spaces, uh, which we can go into. I've got images here today. So they consist of yoga, Pilates. Um, we've even done a dog wellness clinic. So um, wow. that's a little bit, yeah, I don't think I told you I know, that. Yeah, no, I we didn't haven't, know that. <laughs> we, haven't, um, we haven't photographed it, but it was for a beautiful client who, um, yeah, she treats she treats dogs, and they do dog Pilates and dog yoga. Oh, and I feel like this is another hazards. talk that yeah, we I, think, I, <laughs> I need think, to put in our schedule. Yeah, I think maybe in five years' time, maybe that's what we'll all be talking about. So, um, I guess the key thing and the way that we approach it is that we consider all the sensory elements along with the practical and the functional, and tie those together to be able to create a space that just has a really calming um, and warming atmosphere. My name is Cyan Pascal. I am a trained architect. I graduated about 11 years ago. I worked here in Melbourne and then I moved to India. And when I was in India, I ended up starting my own multidisciplinary design firm. And I did 
a kind of range of projects over there, a boutique hotel in Bombay, and I did a yoga studio, I did um, a charitable organisation uh, in the country, and in that time I was simultaneously training with um, a yoga teacher there, a guru-student kind of relationship, which for those of you who've ever done yoga, um, you might have heard of, well, everyone's heard of the term guru, <laughs> guru. Um, and so while I was there, I'd been practicing for a really long time yoga, and I decided that I wanted to make the switch into uh, teaching. And I did my teacher training, and things kind of shifted for me massively. But it's interesting that um, in the five, six years since making that shift from design into uh, being a full-time teacher, how there are certain crossovers. Which it's, uh, and you know, I didn't realize there were so many crossovers mm -hmm. until I was on a podcast, um, I don't know, about a year ago or so, and she was sort of talking to me about how the kinds of spaces I was creating then were very much about um, people feeling at home and finding a certain, like you were describing, Alicia, that there's an, there's an energy or a warmth. And when you're a designer and you're given a space, very often you'll find um, dead space. And it's your job to awaken, activate, enliven and make that space somewhere that you want to be. Mm. And we kind of, I mean, I only realised this afterwards, but she was like, well, you're doing that within people's bodies and minds now. Mm. And it's about, for me, you know, when I'm creating sacred space now, it's about getting people to um, feel completely comfortable at home in the space where I am. I tend to do mainly workshops and trainings now, and I do that in a lot of different spaces. Mm. We do a whole lot of stuff to create sacred space mm. from mantra, intention, we use crystals, flowers, candles, there's a whole heap of things that create a sacred space in what is a nondescript space. But then we do it on a personal energetic level. So your body becomes your own internal space that you are inhabiting. Mm -hmm. So as a teacher, your, your relationship to the whole space and how you hold space, that's mm -hmm. the thing that's always talked about as a facilitator. Your holding space, that mm -hmm. is... It's, so, it's kind of so funny because I never thought about them as having a relationship, but now that I'm sort of asked to describe it in more detail, I think that there is a nice synergy between them. Mm, absolutely. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Christian. I work with uh, Technogym since one year ago. Uh, I'm an architect. I was graduated in architecture in Politecnico di Milano. Uh, I was lucky to born in a family already working with... Uh, the best architect of the 60s and the 70s in Italy, like uh, Gio Ponti, Coparisi, but even internationally with uh, Charles Rennie, Macintosh, uh, Sven Staff, Ero Arnio. So I was born in this kind of family, and I could only study uh, architecture. Uh, after that, mm -hmm. I realized anyway that uh, there's someone that is uh, better than me in designing. So uh, I started to work uh, with a design company uh, my role was uh, mixed between uh, the sales, the PR, and marketing. I started with uh, Baler Italia, uh, moving to Moroso, and then to Cappellini, having the opportunity to work with uh, the best uh, design uh, trend setter and talent scouter, like uh, Patrizia Moroso and Giulio Cappellini, that gave me uh, my, my master, of course and uh, gave me the possibility and the opportunity to meet uh, uh, the most important archi stars worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, one year ago I decided uh, to move in Technogym and uh, many of my colleagues or friends have said, but why Technogym? Technogym, uh, they make uh, fitness equipment. To be honest, I realized that uh, we don't only make fitness equipment, we, we give experience, uh, it's about uh, a lifestyle. Uh, uh, we are really connected uh, with, uh, with architects. Uh, uh, every single product that uh, we, we make is uh, 
design uh, with uh, uh, and taking care of every single detail so uh, i think uh, that's my place right mm. now yeah absolutely um i'm fascinated by um this idea of using design to create a mood and to create a space um maybe if we start with um alicia could you unpack the importance of being able to do that um, through through spatial design, um, perhaps comparing the work you've done for some of us and Warrior One? Um, I think if a space has been well designed or, you know, really considered, it will just feel right from the moment that you walk in. And that is, um, that's got to do with you know, we've considered where the entry door location is, what the sight lines are, what are the forms that you're greeted with, what's the tactile, the sensory, so, you know, what are you hearing, smelling, seeing? Um, and it's all of those elements coming together that really um, do create that mood. I think also something really important is that, you know, these spaces are functional spaces and it's incredibly incredibly important for our clients and for the business to, to function in the way that they need to, but it's our role as a designer to kind of weave that in seamlessly so that it's not heroing, because I think that that's the difference between a well-designed space and say, you know, I don't know, uh, I hope no one here works with fitness first, but like a fitness <laughs> first. Um, so I... They use our uh, equipment, so it's yeah. good. Um, so in terms of uh, the work that we've done for some of us and Warrior One, I guess it's good to, to compare them because when you do enter both of those spaces, they really are, um, they really do transport you. And I think that people are now looking for more, they're, they're going there to work out and feel good, but it's more about sort of the ritual and the experience on top of actually the exercise. So yeah, Warrior One is a pure yoga space. It was... Um, it was actually, it's located a little bit further away from the CBD, so it was really important for it to be destinational. Um, the clients, their values are quite raw. Um, they, it's natural, it was sort of by the beach, so, you know, the fit-out needed to, needed to reflect that, and so it's quite head back, there's not really any colour. Um, and then in comparison to some of us, which is a, a business that's run by four physios, so it's a little bit more medical, there was podiatry, um, there's myotherapy, there's massage, but then they also do um, clinical Pilates and, and yoga as well, as well as having a cafe. So there was, there was a lot of considerations in that space. It was in Paran, so it's located um, closer to the CBD. It was quite, it was a little bit more refined, um, but there's more colour. And so we introduced this like really lovely, subtle ombre in the entrance, um, and then you're greeted with kind of more pastel tones that then balance out with sort of neutrals and concretes. And um, a lot of consideration was given to how you enter into that cafe space, and so you still do get that sense of calm. Um, so two very different mm. different fit outs, but they do still embody the same the same feeling when you go in. And I think um, that's due to they're different because they're due to the brand. And um, if if someone in, you know a designer doesn't kind of touch a space, then you'll purely just get the functional elements in there as a, as opposed to. Um, you know, the essence of the brand. Mm. I'm yeah. curious from the client's perspective, the, the people that you're dealing with, do they come to you with a very clear idea of what they want? Um, or is it more of a dialogue between the two? I always say to our clients, give us your problem and we'll solve it. <laughs> um, you don't need to have the answers because they often don't. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of the time, and, and I think these wellness spaces, because it is a growing industry, these are first time, first time builders. It's their first, um, it's their first space that they've ever opened, and it's kind of their dream. So, it's really nice working with those people. That you'll find that they do have, you know, many images, Pinterest boards, a, a lot to bring to the table, which you know I really, or, or we really, is you know, celebrate. So, I think um, we work with them a lot in terms of how that space needs to function. So, we know all the little nitty gritters, gritties of their business, but, mm. um, and they do always say we want our clients just to walk out feeling good. That kind of seems to be the consistent thread. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. Um, Christian, I'm wondering for you, um, the clients that you work with uh, are actually, I guess, a combination of architects and designers in your work with Techno Gym. Um, can you explain how you work with people in that industry and, and how exactly your role fits into that discussion? 
Mm, yes, uh, architects and interior designer are uh, our best influencer. So we like to work uh, together with them, uh, just helping them uh, to realize uh, a state-of-the-art project. We are working in four different uh, fields, uh, as uh, I show, it was out before in a slide, uh, in uh, home, in corporate, in hospitality, and in club, of course, that is still our main business. And all uh, this segment, anyway, need, uh, there is an architect that do the project, of course. Uh, usually, uh, remaining the, uh, the architect, uh, the main actor, uh, we are asking them uh, the finishes, the color, uh, their preference, uh, what kind of client they have, uh, because this is uh, very important to know too, because we have different lines, uh, uh, maybe some of them dedicated to a sporty client and some others uh, to more quiet uh, training uh, people, I mean. And uh, depending of, uh, of them, we are offering the, the best solution. So we provide uh, 2D and 3D and renders, mm. uh, working together with the architects. Uh, and uh, the architects then will give uh, our project with their finishes to the final client mm. in order to have uh, a state-of-the-art uh, project. Following, uh, sorry if I, I go on, but uh, following these uh, golden rules, there are some rules uh, that uh, we are working uh, with uh, just to have uh, the perfect project. Not everyone uh, of the architects knows uh, the distance uh, uh, is that is necessary between one treadmill and the other. Uh, maybe not everyone knows uh, uh, the height of the, of the room, how much it must be just to uh, install some of our equipment uh, or uh, the direction of the light is very important uh, where to position the uh, air conditioning machines there are all information that we are asking at the beginning of the project just not to have problem later mm, mm, absolutely so it's this idea that you're designing a space that is that really needs to be supremely functional um, on both, um, you know, a spatial and a, uh, I suppose, an emotional level. Um, I'd like to ask you, Cyan, um, what can we learn from uh, spaces abroad that maybe um, don't have this level of contemporary uh, architectural thinking behind them? How do they, what have you observed um, in your travels? Um, well, I've done a lot of teaching, practicing in India and you go to India and you practice there and you realize why everyone's doing yoga because it's so nuts. You're in a room and there's some guy outside shouting at 6 a.m. you know if it's, I mean you get that in Rome as well I'm sure <laughs> or where you know um, and you realize that what is going on especially look I'm coming at it from a yoga a meditation perspective is that I mean here we are so spoiled you know we have beautiful designers and there is like thick wads of acoustic insulation and you've got the best heaters and when you're in India you're sweating it out but you're doing the same thing and yeah. it's quite interesting because when I mean if anyone's ever you know gone to any sacred space in the east it's a riot of color and it's mm -hmm. so interesting because in the west when we think about creating some kind of calm, peaceful, spiritual place. It is muted tones and mm. it's so fascinating when yeah. you can actually, uh, I mean, you start to see what's going on culturally. And also I think that, um, you know, from a Western perspective, again, this kind of being a little spoiled for, or <laughs> I don't know, I guess design choice mm. and aesthetic choice. Over in India, for example, sacred space can be, um, can be a tree and you I mean it's so beautiful I, I, I see India through I think very rose-colored lenses even though I lived there for a long time but it's sacred every moment there is sacred you, it'll be it's the middle of Bombay there's 26 million people there mm. it's filled with traffic yeah. you know and pollution and yet you walk down the road and someone has wrapped fabric around a tree and placed a Ganesha in there and someone prays to that little tree and mm. that for them with their intention is really mm. um, it, it creates a sacred space uh, and so I think that um, 
I think that it's so great that now people are really thinking about the design of um, wellness spaces. And I also think that we can kind of relax a little bit about it. Mm. Um, having said that, I think that there are a few really key things as being somebody who, who does it, mm. who does hold space. Acoustics are really important. Mm. Um, it's really hard to kind of get people into a feeling, mm. which is what it's all about. You've got to get people feeling something when the ceilings are really high. Like, mm. I can do my best. We can all do a meditation. I would love to do a meditation with everyone, actually. I, I would love <laughs> to do that. <laughs> we can do a really quick one at some point if you want to. Um, but when it's a really high, vast ceiling, it's really tough. Mm. When people can't hear you, it's hard. Um, if there are people walking in and out, it's mm. difficult. Uh, but sacred space can, can look so many different ways. Mm. I have a... Um, a teacher who's training with me and she said she's been um, teaching in a menswear store what? and the guys rock up and they're in their suits and they love it because they feel comfortable <laughs> so they can drop in and meditate and he's wearing a suit and tie and she's like I wanted to tell him he could take his tie off but he's so comfortable in that and I think the interesting thing is I mean I don't know how you feel Alicia or um, you Christian but do, do you find that sometimes clients are intimidated by these extremely beautiful spaces? That's a great question. Yeah. I think it's really important um, when you think about like what I would want in a wellness space and, and what you want to be as, as the end user and you want to be comfortable and that's about removing any sort of pretentious or um, it can't feel over-designed because then all of a sudden it becomes polarising. It's really important to strike that balance. So it's being considered, it's being designed, but it's not over the top. Yep. Yeah. I think they are intimidated until they are not starting to train inside and yeah. live the experience. Yeah. Yeah. When they live the experience that we can give them, they <laughs> are not intimidated at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, I mean, because I've worked in a range of yoga studios as well, and the most beautiful yoga studios in Melbourne, and people are afraid coming in. You know that they are a little, and then once yeah. they do the practice, they're okay, but interesting that even the over design could be a barrier yeah absolutely yeah. people true. like to know where the toilets are or where to yeah. put their bag down or where do their shoes go because otherwise they just kind of circle and feel uncomfortable and you know it's, that's enough to put them off yeah and i think it is that idea of making this experience seamless so people come in and it's almost um uh it's totally logical to, to experience this space in the way that it is. You have to make it almost, um, yeah, it, give it to them. Everything yeah. must be as um, much seamless as possible. Uh, we, are, uh, we developed one, uh, one app uh, that uh, recognizes you wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm traveling a lot. I have a global role, so I jump from one continent to another. And every time I enter in, uh, in my hotel, my app tell me where is the closest uh, techno gym uh, equipped wow. gym. I go down, uh, every single machine recognize me, already recorded all my training, uh, give me advices of uh, what, uh, what is the best uh, training for me today. Uh, this is something fantastic, you know, it's wow. a seamless experience. You have to mm. give a good experience at the end to the client. Absolutely. Yeah. Does it, does it also record the things that you've eaten and how, how, <laughs> how much you have to this work? This is a secret. <laughs> this is a secret. I prefer I it not to. I always wonder about but those But that's why I train a lot. <laughs> that's why I train a lot, because I like oh, to okay. eat. Oh, that's why you're with Techno Gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Alicia, I think there was an interesting, um, actually this goes to both Alicia and Christian, there was an interesting uh, note that we brought up in our discussion that we had prior to this one, um, that you uh, said that you had to sort of think about the lines of um, where people would do headstands on the wall, um, because the, there's a different whole understanding of proportions and body when you're talking about a space that people are going to like maybe throw themselves at walls, you know, and, and how do you plan for that? So I wonder if you could speak to that, um, the different proportions and the different understanding you have to have when you're designing these spaces. Uh, 
uh, it depending it depending of the clients it depending of the uh, what kind of segment we are following uh, i i just i want to jump back to yesterday the first uh, panel that uh, you you asked they were speaking about uh, corporate and uh, they say uh, why to have uh, wellness uh, in the corporate uh, and of course corporate is uh, something uh, in fact for us uh, growing up so much is a particular kind of client so uh, you are working maybe uh, for a private uh, cor corporate gym for 200 uh, lawyers that they work uh, so long until late uh, and maybe they don't have time to go to the gym so you have to think of something anyway that can relax them uh, just distray them for 45 minutes of training but inside the office uh, I just had a very interesting meeting last week in Rome for a big big company and they are building uh, uh, the new headquarters and uh, they are not interested in a proper gym in a fitness uh, room but they want to spread the gym in uh, many different areas of the building and it's very interesting so that's the project that we like to to work with and uh, to give our uh, experience uh, and then depends uh, of the clients uh, all the, the information that they give us and uh, how we better can help them mm, absolutely uh, and, and you alicia um it's something that gets considered a lot. I think the difference between um, designing a wellness space in comparison to, say, designing a home is the way that the body does really interact with the, the perimeter and all of the materials that you select. So um, the reference that um, Sandra brought up was at Warrior One and we're designing the second one now and so it's been great because get to do take two and fix all the mistakes we made last time because um, that's the only way you learn but there's actually nail polish marks on on the walls where that where they're doing headstands so it's it's those sort of things like uh, you know from a client's perspective you need to be able to have washable surfaces you need to be really um, you need to really understand you know the width of the body the way that it's interacting with each of each of the spaces that that mm. you're designing um, and then you know, another small thing was that, that really affected the experience there was the, the lockers and the sound that the lockers were making. So that's something that we really needed to, to go back and, and reconsider and kind of refit because there was a whole class of people that were starting to do their what do you do when you first first lay down in the beginning of your of your yoga class and there was a whole bunch of people leaving that just kept slamming. 30 to 40 mm. lockers and all of a sudden that just breaks their that breaks mm. their zen moment and, and and gives them you know quite a not the best start to that to their class so mm. it's all of those materiality elements that are, that are so so important in these spaces because they can really affect the experience of of the customer yeah. Yeah, and it's funny because very few spaces now that are being designed do all that stuff and so then as teachers you're told you're not allowed to do anything against the walls. Like, there's all these rules. Yep. All the walls are white. And, I, you know, I want to do something like, okay. Oh, hang so on. Is, is this going to get... No, no, under? I can, yeah. <laughs> like, so you want to push your foot against the wall yep. and, and get into you know, wow. that position. And yeah. you've got all these white walls and the studios are like, you can't do it. So you... you you kind of you can't do a whole heap of stuff in your yeah. classes <laughs> anymore, yeah. and so to be able to have, you know, great materials mm. and um, and freedom for teachers and for the people who are doing it, and so that things aren't necessarily, um, so that it's not hard for people to use this stuff, so mm. that they can jump on the machine and they're not going to trip over stuff, or you know, they can leave their bag next to it, or they can, you know, if they scuff the wall nearby because they're wearing their runners and the rubber soles are black and all mm. that stuff, I think that is really it's key. Mm. What I noticed in uh, the last project, uh, especially in club, uh, is uh, that they are using a lot of uh, graffiti. Uh, on the walls yep. or uh, uh, but this is uh, all about uh, the Instagram ability 
of the yeah, totally. location that now is something uh, mandatory and not mm -hmm. only in the club of the gym but uh, even in uh, in hotels i'm realizing mm. that they have something that is instagramable mm. because for them uh, you know it's a is a marketing uh, element very very important that uh, they can you know you you go in singapore uh, i showed before there was a picture of the Marina Bay in Singapore, where the Gmail is located at the 36th floor. And of course, it's a place where uh, you go there and you take a picture of you on the treadmill with all Singapore yeah. down of you. And this image uh, run all around the world. So and then you hop off the treadmill and then you go and eat at one of the hawker stalls instead of uh, working out. Uh, yeah. Well <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it's something very interesting. And that's the reason why even... Uh, especially in the hotel hospitality market until four or five years ago uh, the gym the fitness area uh, were located all downstairs on the basement and mm. now step by step they are growing in importance mm. and going to the 10th floor 20th floor 60th floors because mm. it's uh, it's important to show this yeah i think so and i think it's uh, you know, we can't ignore the uh, influence of uh, Instagram uh, and social media, and I think it's not something to be demonized either. I think it's the way it, we're designed. That's how you use it. I mean, exactly. Yeah. So I think that um, that needs to be incorporated into the design as much as anything. But the space, I take your point, Sian, about it not needing to be it needing to not be precious space, as in. Uh, you can use this space functionally, you can mess it up. Mm. You can, That's you the can point of yeah, it as you can, well. You can mm. be physical in that space um, because I think it goes against that idea of, of what we assume wellness to be, this kind of white box. Um, but, yeah, as you're saying, we need to be able to mess it up and get a little bit uh, rough. Mm. <laughs> um, as someone who has, uh, in fact, I met Cyan uh, because I did a... Um, I, that there was an image there up of um, the M Pavilion um, class that she did a couple of years back. And as someone who has um, been able to create that space uh, for people um, in open air <laughs> with traffic um, from Sydney, uh, not Sydney, right, um, from St Kilda Road, rather, um, all the way around, um, how do you go about doing that? It can be a big challenge, mm. but a lot of the work that I do is based on vibration and frequency, which might start to sound a bit kind of way out. But um, I'm sure that you all know that basically everything in existence is vibrating at a specific frequency. And if you can elevate that within yourself through specific mantra, the kind of work that you do then, and you get everybody else to also start to elevate into that, then you can hold space. Mm. So there are specific yogic techniques to do that. Yeah. But I have to say that when I'm supported by the space, it makes it so much easier. So mm. for example, I run um, like a full moon ceremony every month. And the last one that we did was in an incredibly beautiful space uh, at the top of Revolver. If any one of you has ever been to Revolver before, I don't know. No. So, oh, wow. wow. <laughs> that's great. Nobody here has been to Revolver. It, <laughs> yeah, one minutes. up the back. <laughs> it's a very dirty nightclub. Um, <laughs> it's been around forever. Yeah, it's, it's the only one that's open next all time. night. Yeah, next, next time, time we'll do it. <laughs> anyway, at the very top, there's this incredible space and it's um, basically two of the floors are now one because it was burnt out in the 80s. And so you've got 10 metre high ceilings and these incredible windows and the moon was rising up over the city and it was this incredible space for us to be doing it in. But it was cold... And the height made the acoustics really difficult. Mm. Um, so it made me really realise that there are some fundamentals, sound, um, heat, and that the quality of the space and the dimensions of the space are actually really important mm. uh, in order to do that. But I, I feel really glad that you still had a, a nice and deep experience in that practice yeah, outside because yeah, <laughs> uh, I do this particular tantric prayer 
So the lineage of yoga that I trained in is Tantra and there are really kind of specific um, energetic things that you can kind of do to help everything be held mm. in some way. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess um, to Christian and also Alicia, um, do you, what, what do you look for in a space for yourselves when you work out? Mm. Good question. For me, you know, I used to be a, a basketball player for many years. And uh, so I, I trained a lot in the past, uh, in a, but with a team. Uh, and now that uh, I prefer to train by myself, uh, I need, of course, uh, a nice environment around me. Uh, not too many equipment, not too many people. Uh, I love to work out at 7 a.m. when I'm in the headquarter. And uh, y you have seen maybe a picture of our gym before, and it's something, uh, uh, I think, unique. And uh, I don't like to train with many people around me. I like uh, chill music, uh, and uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, 45 minutes of pleasure must be, not a sacrifice. For me, it's a pleasure to train. And we're still talking about working out. <laughs> <laughs> That's um. the gym, sorry. This is our gym in our headquarters. Wow. It's that two floor of gym, and outside there is that platform where we organize the yoga classes Great. and Tai Chi wow. classes. Invite me, please. And this is uh, our uh, headquarters. You see the gym is the round one. Then we have one building of the offices, and back there is all the production site. At the end, you can see the, the seaside. It's uh, just 12 kilometers from... Uh, you see the basketball field. Uh, there is all the path around the, the building where we can run and uh, organize outdoor uh, events. Yeah, and that's, all. that's why I like to train there. Italians just do it better, don't they? That doesn't <laughs> even look yeah. real. <laughs> so, um, what do I look for? So I look first and foremost for something that just feels comfortable. So, you know, it, it really is um, an extension of your personal space, but in a public space. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a spot for your shoes, a place to hang your jacket, your own locker. Um, I guess then following on from that, it's, it, it's about, you know, the lighting, of course, the people um, and what they're actually teaching and knowing it, it, that sort of um, personal nature as well. So I think it's really nice that once you keep going, you become part of their, their family. Um, and I think it's really important um, for the brand not to be plastered in your face so that you kind of get an understanding of what the business is about but you don't have to have huge logo or you, you know or it's not kind of you know in your face yeah so. yeah do you find details as well like that fine detail for people if it's a wellness space like that sounds like that's what you design and like those little moments of something really beautiful that they can appreciate um, I definitely do. I, I don't know um, how much other people do, like, you know, those kind of small moments, but we always talk in the studio probably too much about the moments. And, um, but I think people will do, do, like, they take them away and they're quite memorable. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Well, um, yeah, the light is very important. Just have a look of uh, our gym. That is so beautiful. And uh, I took this picture personally early morning with my phone. Wow, that's a good ad for your phone. And you see how it's important anyway, even the natural light. Mm. This is something different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I prefer yeah. the one before. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I'm just uh, conscious of time. So uh, we do have time for questions. If anyone does have one, uh, we can uh, send a mic to you. So just pop your hand up. Christian, I wanted to ask you if you wouldn't mind elaborating a little bit on, you're talking about that workplace design where you incorporated wellness, but it wasn't in one area. It was spread throughout the entire workplace. We do a lot of workplace design and we get a lot of clients asking us for uh, gyms and wellness spaces to be brought into the design. I'm interested to know how you tackled that. Uh, yes, this client, but it's not only this one, uh, because it's something that I'm facing uh, uh, often. 
they are uh, asking uh, even you know uh, okay we have if you have time later pass by our booth we have uh, a table around the table we have this uh, wellness active seating there are some balls where you can sit and work uh, actually all our meeting rooms in uh, in our offices are equipped by these balls because we like to have short meetings uh, straight to the point uh, and so that ball help you to have a correct seat of course you cannot is not a, a substitute to a chair uh, for for offices but anyway it's something that you can use for some hours so we will equip every single floor of that building of the client of uh, last week with this wellness wellness ball in the meeting room then uh, in a coffee area in an area break they wish to use uh, some uh, flexibility uh, equipment that we have for stretching we have a couple of uh, uh, machine for stretching and they are interested in this then we have an outdoor collection they have a fantastic terrace and we will uh, uh, give them uh, this uh, outrace is the name of this uh, collection that we can position outdoor and uh, they were uh, very very interesting about that and then uh, they are asking us uh, even some uh, advices how to communicate to better to communicate to the employee uh, the well-being uh, and so what to write on the walls uh, uh, I mean they have a fantastic stare but they they always uh, use the lift so just uh, putting uh, uh, some uh, payoff on the walls uh, i mean take the stair uh, exercise is medicine uh, health is wealth something like that with some colors of course something interesting and then catch your eyes uh, was funny because i had a meeting some weeks ago with a, a very wealthy indian guy and uh, his business is uh, uh, huge and uh, but uh, he has this dream to open hotels and uh, he visited uh, our uh, techno gym village and uh, when he saw all this payoff on the walls and uh, in front of the lift uh, there is one payoff take the stairs and he said but you know what i want to do in my hotel uh, tell me what i want to put the lift uh, the payoff take the stairs but when you call the lift and you open the door of the lift you find the stair <laughs> so <laughs> say, if you do this you are the number one i will join your hotel for sure <laughs> so th that's anyway i think that corporate uh, uh, buildings are and the corporate clients are uh, uh, is becoming a huge market for us more and more important more and more important because the people has no maybe time to uh, spend one hour to reach the the gym uh, and then uh, uh, if they can train uh, in their uh, working place why not why not thank you does anyone else have any questions thanks Um, firstly, thank you so much about describing India in such a beautiful way because health for us is basically running across Juhu Beach in Bombay. That's what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, I know we've spoken about health in hospitality. I know we've spoken about health in fitness centers. But Melbourne has become a huge market for retirement village and aged care mm -hmm. where they are senior citizens who are in, you know, a good health and, you know, they can actually walk up to the gym and we are designing health and fitness centers for them. How do we make it effortless, the transition, so they don't feel like it's a task to get into that space? How do we, um, how do we encourage senior citizens to you know, actually get into a space called the fitness center, but relax and go through that therapy? Like, what do you think? I mean, you've, you've spoken about yoga and calm and keeping the calm. Like, how do we encourage that and design fitness centers You know, for you know, seniors in retirement villages, especially in aged care where they really need it. Mm -hmm. And architects and designers are giving them a location, but we've done a lot of um, aged care centers where the fitness centers then get turned into like banquet 
or mm. it's like leased out for something else or it probably becomes like a nail salon and you know people are not using it and I feel like we are lacking in that mm. and other than just putting like one piece of treadmill in wh what are the better ways to you know make that space more welcoming mm. how do we make it more tactile I'm I interested in answer very fast actually, actually, my yeah. point of view then I leave it to you uh, you know what is becoming very trendy to have uh, the gym in room in the hotels. We are uh, providing uh, hotel solutions because not everyone likes to train uh, in the middle of uh, 20 people, especially maybe uh, aged people. They prefer to train uh, in their room. And so we give the, the opportunity to the hotel even to buy maybe some bike or some uh, uh, wellness bag we have with inside some toys, that some tools that we can play and, and train in your, uh, in your private room. You can order this when you book your room. You order even the, this, these tools for, uh, that you can train in the room. This is the new, the new tendency. But I think in HK, residents want to leave the room because they don't have any other activity. They are basically in, a, in such a hectic, like, or, or, you know, probably mundane routine of yeah, waking up, taking your pills, having your breakfast. And that's why we design spaces with courtyards where they can walk and it's a recreation. So they so-and-so goes out with their friend, has a cup of coffee in that courtyard. It's, it's, that's their little city on their own. So we want to encourage them to get out of this space because the way we design centers is there's a fitness center on every floor within a close proximity of like 20 rooms. We are giving you a fitness center. But how do we make it much more engaging rather than just like putting a treadmill in? Like what can we add into that space? You know, do we create... A, Have a, you a asked them? We, we haven't received really good feedback from the users because all the last few projects that we've designed before though, before you design. Uh, no, we yeah, don't I have think that is key. Like I, I mean, every time I would do, I, and I've done project, look, I haven't done any aged care, so I can't mm. personally, but any project, and I was doing it specifically, say, I was working with weavers up in Maheshwar, and these people are, I mean, they're, they're beautiful, super simple kind of people, and I come in, and I'm the designer, and I'm like, you know what, I know what you guys want, and I think that I want this, that, whatever, I, I spent two days with these people and we had to have a translator and I asked them, these are young guys, nobody's ever asked them what they wanted in their life and finally someone is coming in and saying, hey, what do you want? They wrote me this whole list, it was the cutest thing, they put together this whole presentation for me. This stuff that I thought that they would want, they didn't. They wanted mud floors, they wanted all, and when, when I did it for them, they used this space like, like nothing else. And I think that that's the key, first of all. Like get them all together because what we think in our heads we want is not what the end user wants. And especially when you're talking about another generation that isn't used to going to gyms, it's not a thing. I mean, I think about my mum. She would never feel comfortable going into a gym like that. She wouldn't know what she was doing, no matter how great the graphics are. No offense to you. I don't know. She'd get it all wrong, I know. But um, she's happy going to a Pilates class that's small with a female teacher in a comfortable room. You know, and so uh, for me, the key, you get them together and you ask them. You, you have to ask the end user what they want before. You can't assume. Yeah, I think it's even probably calling it a fitness space for that generation. They're so they're in a retirement home because they need help. So I think that that one-on-one -on -one care is really important in in those sort of gym spaces. And and, and I don't know what a good name for it is, but um, you know maybe it's just an extension of their you know of the, of their kind of medical appointments because I think they're probably going to be scared if they get on a piece of equipment that they're going to to hurt themselves or injure themselves. Um, I think That's good safety and support I think yeah, is huge really, for people. Yeah, they really, um, you know, they need their hand held to get down the corridor often. So, so you know, they, they really do need that support. So I think it's important for the centre to, f to first of all encourage it and, and maybe think about the way that it's sort of, you know, not sold but kind of like pitched to them and, and 
you know, think about how we get them from going and having their coffee and their social catch up to actually with the person that they do that, going and, you know, doing whatever they do within that space. And so maybe it's about speaking to physios and, um, and the medical profession about what sort of exercises they need to be doing, because it literally could just be... I don't know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I don't know what it is, but it may not even be going on a treadmill or it may not even need equipment, it could just need mat stuff and, and you know, do we take mirrors out of that space and, yeah. um, you know, is, is there a lot of natural light and, you know, is, is the Golden Girls on TV? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think it's just making it feel enjoyable, not like they're having to go to do, to do a workout to get better because a lot of these people may just feel like they're just, I don't know, for want of a better word, at the end of their road, what's the point? You know, mm. like I'm in a retirement home now. Why? Why do I need to go for a walk? Because yeah. I'm here because I can't look after myself. I don't know. It's yeah, sort of yeah, the it's, yeah. it's, it's getting into their psyche. A and it's bit. probably got to do with the facilitators of the spaces that you're designing for. Huge. I mean, th- that was mm. the other thing. You, uh, when I was designing commercial spaces, you could design an amazing commercial space for like the best looking cafe. But if you've got shitty cafe owners excuse my language and they don't produce good food no one's going to go and so you can design a beautiful gym but if the you know the people who are kind of the facilitators of these homes aren't giving the kind of support to the space that you've created and like you know incorporating it into programs and stuff it doesn't matter how beautiful or well designed it is it's i think that there has to be so um so much kind of continuity in you know creating this kind of space between the end user you and also the people who are kind of supporting this whole thing as well thank you cool i think that about wraps it up thank you so much to christian cyan and you. to Alicia thank you for, for joining me. us today um, you've definitely inspired me to um, hop on a treadmill now and um, probably do a meditation after this. Sorely needed. Um, and yeah, just thank you. Thanks so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.